Mr. Shairul Taha. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Singapore's two-year recidivism rate of 22%, 22.1%, is one of the lowest in the world. We are second only to Norway and South Korea. This is an applaudable achievement and a testimony to the good work done by our Singapore Prisons Service. Given our low recidivism rate, Employment Preparation Scheme, EMPS, is a positive step in the right direction because it seeks to provide inmates better opportunities to reintegrate back to society as they will be allowed to undergo skills training and education as well as working within the community. With sufficient training and preparation at the tail end of their sentences, inmates have better chances to be employed upon their release and ultimately increasing the chances of successful reintegration back to society. I stand in support of the bill. However, I would like to seek clarification on a few matters. Under the previous work release scheme, inmates were given permission to leave prisons in order to work. What is the current number and percentage of inmates that are allowed to leave prisons under WRS? And what is the absconder rate? How do we reduce it, keeping in mind the intent to have more inmates placed on EMPS? What is the number and percentage of inmates that are expected to be on EMPS? Are there inmates with specific crimes that will not be allowed to be on EMPS? What are the guiding principles that help us ascertain which inmates are suitably ready to be placed on EMPS? Given that we expect a larger number of inmates participating in this program and that the administering administering is done on a case-to-case -case basis, we can expect that our prison officers will have an increased workload. Do we currently have sufficient resources to handle the increased workload? What can we do now in order to ensure our rehabilitation officers are adequately supported as we take more steps towards our prisons without walls concept? While we do want more of our inmates to be better prepared and ultimately reintegrate back to society, we must also be mindful not to tolerate any breaches of conditions by supervisors. Hence, the amendments also provides SPS officers with powers to obtain document or information from third parties. And this will be a required amendment to assist our SPS officers to investigate and make inquiries into breaches of conditions by supervisors. The EMPS rests on the premise that inmates who are better prepared through training and upskilling can find meaningful employment once their sentence is over. Meaningful employment will help the ex-inmate reintegrate better and ultimately be accepted as a useful and contributing member of society. How do we ensure the inmates experience good quality training that would lead to a higher chance of them landing a job after their sentences? Are the courses offered under EMPS limited and only available from specific training providers? If so, what are the types of training that will be made available to the supervisors? And how do we choose our training provider partners for EMPS? While we want to get suitable inmates prepared for their life post-sentence, we must also be mindful not to dishearten these individuals who are intending to change by exposing them to discrimination which will dampen their confidence to reintegrate through meaningful re-employment. With that in mind, how do we ensure the staff and fellow trainees at the training centres are prepared to accept these individuals who are trying to turn over a new leave? Are there counselling or guidance or career guidance sessions available to help our inmates deal with discrimination or stigmatisation? with more and more training and jobs needing IT or digital skills, if the training or job and placement requires the supervisors to have access to mobile devices, social media, access to computers, will these devices be provided for in prison? Is it a cause of concern if inmates have access to such devices? Will this affect the inmates' time they spend in prison? Currently, Many citizens can use their Skills Future credit for training and upskilling. Can inmates placed on EMPS use, use their Skills Future credit too? 
Ultimately, we want relevant and updated training and reskilling for our inmates so that they will have a fair chance of landing a job post-sentence and hence increasing the likelihood that they will be meaningfully employed. We must ensure the quality of such training is of a suitable standard. Hence, it may also be useful if such training or reskilling is accredited or by the end of the training or reskilling program, our inmates receive some form of certification to help them with future employability. With the idea of future employability of a post-sentence inmate in mind, how can we get more employers to be part of the program to work with the inmates? Ex-inmates face a tough time landing a job even with proper skills and qualification. Despite the best efforts of many inmates who want to turn over a new leaf, discrimination and stigmatization remains a reality. Can we better incentivize employers to consider employing ex-inmates? What can we do to encourage a more welcoming environment for ex-offenders in the workplace? Can EMPS used to address manpower shortages that we have in the digital manufacturing engineering industry or even kickstart talent in a new industry? For example, the electric car repair industry. I believe this would certainly help our inmates be more future ready and hence more likely to be meaningfully employed post-sentence. Madam Deputy Speaker, in Malay, please. Walaupun EMPS menyediakan peluang emas bagi pesalah untuk mencari pekerjaan dan kembali menyumbang kepada masyarakat, kita tidak harus lupa akan peri pentingnya peranan keluarga dalam mengintegrasikan pesalah dalam masyarakat kita. Keluarga seharusnya mendorong pesalah untuk mengambil bahagian dalam sesi pemulihan supaya mereka dapat menggunakan peluang ini untuk membangunkan semula kehidupan mereka. Sememangnya, sememangnya EMPS merupakan peluang yang harus dimanfaatkan kerana ia akan memberikan masa bagi pesalah untuk meningkatkan diri mereka dengan meraih kemahiran baru supaya mereka mempunyai peluang yang lebih baik untuk mendapat pekerjaan selepas dibebaskan dari penjara. Sokongan dan galakan keluarga amat penting kerana ramai bekas pesalah menghadapi pelbagai cabaran semasa mereka cuba mengintegrasi semula kepada masyarakat. Oleh itu, kita harus membina persekitaran yang sesuai bagi pesalah untuk memperbaiki diri mereka dan kembali menjadi anggota masyarakat yang menyumbang kepada masyarakat dan keluarga. Program-program seperti Fitra, Family and Inmates, True Care Assistance Haven oleh Majlis Ugama Islam Singapura bersama M Kuasa 3 bertujuan untuk menyediakan sokongan bersepadu dan holistik untuk pesalah serta keluarga mereka daripada dalam jagaan hinggalah selepas jagaan. Keluarga-keluarga akan dihubungkan dengan rangkaian bantuan yang diperlukan manakala pasangan mereka yang berada di penjara disokong sewajarnya dengan perkhidmatan dalam jagaan. Saya ingin mengambil kesempatan untuk mengucapkan terima kasih kepada semua sukarelawan fitrah dan organisasi lain yang serupa kerana memberikan bantuan kepada pesalah dan keluarga mereka. In conclusion, Madam Deputy Speaker, overall, I'm in support of the amendments. However, for it to be effective, we need to ensure SPS is adequately resourced, we have good quality training and train training providers to enable the inmates to reintegrate through meaningful employment. We have a strong support from employers in the right industries. We can ensure the inmate's family is supported, advised and counseled so that they can be the pillar of support for the inmates to reintegrate back to society. And lastly, and perhaps most crucially, we need to continue our efforts in getting society to accept these individuals who are intending to turn over a new leaf and be contributing members of our society. That being said, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm in support of the amendments to the bill. Thank you.